Uh, hey guys, so this tutorial, um, I'm just going to show how I created the uh, uh, sparkling water effect um, on my renders of this uh, this ocean I created in Moto. Um, one thing, I'm, I'm, I'm in Moto uh, purely just to show the setup for it because uh, there are a few important things you have to have uh, set up here in your uh, in Moto or your 3D program. Um, before this will work. Um, also, uh, as a note, this effect really only does work um, from 3D rendered uh, imagery uh, because it, it makes use of the high dynamic range uh, that you get from uh, rendering out uh, floating point images. Uh, it's a bit hard to get that kind of information out of uh, real footage. Uh, th th there is ways. So you could possibly apply the same same effect, but this is mainly for um, 3D imagery out of a 3D program. Uh, so in Moto specifically, uh, in our final color output, we want to make sure um, here that our clamp colors is uh, turned off. Um, so we actually get ranges out of 100% um, white. So this this even though this all will be white pixels here and you'll be like, wow, it's all white. It's, there's actually a lot more information going on there. And um, there'll be a, v a very small point in there that'll be the actual sun. Um, that'll be a, a lot brighter than white. And this is what we need to create this effect really, um, to make it really look nice. So, that, I mean, that's the main thing. Um, also, I guess saving out as a, um, an EXR. I, I, I saved my stuff out as 16-bit uh, EXRs out of Moto. Um, mainly because I haven't really noticed the difference between 16-bit um, and 32-bit in terms of how far I push it in post um, and the file size is, is a lot smaller, huge, huge, huge amount smaller. So if you're rendering out a few hundred frames or thousand frames, um, your, your image sequences can start taking up a lot of hard drive space. So 16-bit um, EXRs, half, which are half floating point, um, definitely helps helps in that regard so anyway so I've rendered this out um, as a sequence uh, and I've loaded it into After Effects which I'll switch to now um, where are we After Effects okay so um, this is the effect here you can kind of see it uh, if I play along um, you'll see uh, this is a half res I'll just chuck it up to full so we get the full uh, effect of it and you'll see um, you'll see in here chuck this up even um, you'll see we're getting these nice, you know, glistens off the off the water where it's really nice and hot, um, and it's not it's not on every single piece. You wouldn't want it to be on every single white pixel in this shot, which is why we are we are unclamping, um, we're unclamping that that output that we get from from motor. So then, only where it gets really hot, we see this effect coming through which helps to um, deliver on that, their realism because obviously you don't get lens flares off everything uh, unless you're um, unless you're Michael Bay um, or someone who likes to put in lens flares like uh, yeah. but uh, we don't, we don't, yeah, we don't want to do that so if we, uh, we take a look at what's actually going on here uh, we strip it down uh, these are just these are just uh, sound effects that I've put in seagulls and such to make it more realistic. So we'll just get rid of them to uh, uh, simplify this. Um, so I guess the the first thing is um, in in your project you want to make sure you've got this here this uh, this little uh, number here in between at the bottom of your project um, tab. To make sure you're working in 32-bit color, um, by default it'll be 8-bit. So if we change it back to 8-bit color, just go okay. I don't think about it. Um, you'll see it's 8-bit color. Um, this this isn't what we want. I mean, if we're rendering out the quality that we're rendering out as, we might as well be doing our post in 32-bit. It gives us all that extra headroom to work with. So um, I'm going to actually delete these. Um, so we can start from scratch. I'll do that as well. That's just an ultra, that's just color correction. 
So we've got this, we've got our, our render output, and you know it's uh, you know, just water happening, simple. Um, first thing I do is I just duplicate it and hide the other one, um, just so I can see directly what I'm working on. And um, I want to chuck it on, what do I want to do, exposure. So we put on an exposure, and okay, we'll get rid of, you see it's already got a levels on there and the curves they they're just tweaking the colors um, not really important um, so we we'll start with the exposure and the lovely thing about this is you'll start to see the extra detail we have in these what look like large chunks of white pixels will actually have um, more detail to them once we bring that down you see there's there's actually a lot more information in there and that's what we want to do that's what we want to ping highlights off so just bring the bring the exposure down, and what I like to do, uh, which proper compositors or people that do this for a living will probably scream and hate me doing. I don't know, um, is bringing down the the um, the gamma, uh, and this will help. Just really, it's just just contrasting it up. Um, so that means we can push it down even more, so we can get just those highlights that we kind of want. Now that, that to me is looking pretty good. Uh, might even go a bit lower in here. So we can get these are still nice and hot and everything else kind of just falls away. Now, so th this in theory is what we're going to be creating all our effects from. So, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, done by, I'm no art for effects master, so I'm just going to uh, duplicate it and hide that one. It's really just so I have a backup to go to when I do the other effects, because uh, this the star effect is made up of multiple, um, a couple of different versions of the same thing. Um, the first one's just um, a blur. We just want to blur this one. I just use, uh, oh. yeah, I just use fast blur. This is quick. Why not? It does what it needs to do. It blurs it. So uh, we. Chuck that on to add. You'll see there. Yeah, so that's that's just giving us a bit of glow. Now you already see there's um, a bit of glow anyway. I had Bloom turned on in Moto, um, so it's really just adding to it on the real hot spots. Um, so that's the first layer. Um, so now we'll go back to this one, um, duplicate it again. Just bring it above so you can just see what's going on. Um, now this one. What I will do here, instead of just a blur, we'll do a directional blur. Uh, put it off on some just random angle. Just not straight. Just can't stand straight. Uh, give a bit of a stretch. Cool. The same thing with that, we want to add it down on top. And, uh, we can duplicate that same layer that has the directional uh, blur on it and crank that off. Uh, we, we can just use the same one and just angle it again. Maybe chuck some more, uh, get it really quite long. Let's type in 60. Just get a good distance. And tweak the exposure maybe a little bit more just to make sure we get that real, the real hot spots. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's it's that's what you do. Um, you uh, bring down the bring down the gamma does help a lot. Um, uh, you'll see it's all over the place, but that's that's when we can then bring down our exposure even more, and we just get it. It's it's just on the hottest points. We're not getting it over here. We're not getting it over here. You know, it's just it's just on the brightest parts. Um, and keep in mind, the more you do blur it, um, the more you need to make it brighter. Because as you blur it, it obviously loses its brightness. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's really that's really all there is to it. And you'll see uh, the great thing about it is you set it up once, and it's uh, set up for your frames. And and this is great to do even. Um, on still images. I, I like using, I've started to use After Effects more for still images than Photoshop, mainly because it's it's easy enough to 
just replace your source footage, your source image, and um, have all the effects happen on top of it um, quite easily. So it's, it's quite a nice program to do stuff in. Um, so uh, yeah, let's just have a look at how that turned out. Uh, quick RAM preview. Uh, you see it's probably a bit more extreme than I had it in the first place. Obviously didn't down the exposure enough. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a quick cheat. I also use the same effect to do lens flares, um, lens artifacts. Uh, you're just blurring things certain ways. Um, you know, get a nice big long like sci-fi looking lens flare. Just blur it horizontally for like 200 pixels and you'll start getting something kind of nice. And you can color them as well, you know, you, could, um, you know, if you want a big red flare or something, you can just color it red. And the fact that you've got all that extra information in the EXR in the first place, that, that really gives you the power to isolate those hotspots. So, and that, yeah, so that's it. Nice and simple. I hope this helped.